Why I've converted from Kyosho remote control cars to team associated. Um, first of all, you know, I've been after about six months now getting back into one tenth scale off road buggy and short course truck racing. So, here on the Gold Coast, Australia, uh, we're lucky enough to have two indoor clay tracks, and uh, they run most popularly most popular is a two-wheel drive short course and uh, two-wheel drive buggy. Um, so, you know, I wanted to get back into car racing, so I got some Kyosho cars because I had Kyosho when I was younger, and I thought, oh, you know, they can't be that bad, can they? They're not. They're good cars. They're actually really, really good cars. The quality of the product is up there. Um, but why did I convert from Kyosho cars to Team Associated? The main word would be consistency. So here I have Team Associated's new SC5M short course truck. And uh, here on the Gold Coast, the Team Associated is extremely popular and uh, most guys will run them. Um, so I've had this car now um, for a couple of weeks and I've raced it three times now. So I've raced it three times and I've had one practice session in it. Um, so, what I found to my amazement is that I can get consistent lap times with this team associated car. So with the Kyosho, you know, I felt I was still quick, but I could never maintain consistent lap times and I always had a hard time trying to set it up to get it to drive easier and was never happy with the setup of the car. Uh, the back end of it would step out on me under brakes and uh, it was just difficult for me to drive. Also, for some reason, I had issues getting traction. Um, and so, you know, for six months, I did not strip idle a gear and then bang, race, strip an idle gear. Next race, strip an idle gear. Next race, strip an idle gear. Uh, for some reason, I just kept stripping idler gears. Um, and it was probably my fault because the slipper was too tight, so it's not the car's blame. I drove it for six months hard as hell, and it didn't have any problems, so it's not that. But the car itself was quite fragile. It would break shock towers, just touching stuff. Bumpers, I broke quite a lot of them, but that was probably my own fault. Um, the front shock tower was crap. Um, other than that, you know, it wasn't too bad. So... Um, the reason why I went to Team Associated because I got sick of the idler gear and everyone else was using them. But when I started driving this car, out of the box, on the first race night, without any practice, I was getting very close to my fastest lap times. And by the end of the night, I had beat my fastest lap times easy, having never driven the truck within uh, a couple of five-minute races. So straight out of the box, kit set up, I was already going faster than my car show car. And then after I took it to the track and uh, did some practice laps and got it set up just nice and straight, you know, uh, everything turning and just the camber and everything, just, just set up straight, you know, just got the right height. It's still a kit set up. Um, I was just pumping out consistent lap after lap after lap after lap. And I just could not believe that I was able to consistently drive this car. I found it to be easier to drive in almost every scenario. Um, and so the, the second time I raced, I qualified third in the A-Main, which is just uh, unheard of for me. Previously with the Kyosho car, I was qualifying C-Main and then bumping up to the B-Main, but I never made it to the B-Main because I stripped idle the gears every time. Anyway, so the consistency of this car was just for me um, in the RC racing world, um, just jaw dropping that I was able to consistently pump out lap after lap without having any accidents or problems. Um, it was that simple. And I was, I was sold straight away how easy it was to drive and how consistent my lap times were. And bang, I was straight up there in the A main with the fastest drivers. So I consider myself not a fast driver. Um, I consider myself a reasonable driver. Um, at the track, I'm now qualifying A main. Um, 
but you know, in a real world scenario, I'd probably be like a in like an Australian titles, like a C main or something like that. Um, there is a guy at the track which is probably as fast as some of the world's fastest drivers in remote control racing, and he's a level above everyone else. But for the fastest drivers around, I'm not that far away, so I'm really happy. So this car is just amazing consistency. So I'll just go through the car with you. So what I did is I bought the new car. I bought the three gear gearbox to go in it because at the track, I was watching some of the cars and they would just accelerate in a really short distance, really quick, really fast. And it looked like they were easier to drive on the track I'm driving. There's a couple of short little run ups, you gotta do a jump. And if you've just got that extra little speed, extra little grip, takeoff power, it just makes it easier. So I got the three gear gearbox. Um, I kind of got the Kashima gold shocks. Um, and I got the aluminium rear hubs. So, come on. Let's see if we can get some. All right, so. So aluminium rear hubs uh, comes with those hexes. No, I bought those hexes. So bought the rear hubs, bought the hex. I have a two millimeter uh, riser. If you buy the kit car and you buy the rear hubs, you will need to buy shorter ball studs because the standard ones will not fit in, they're too big. So I bought some extra six mil ball studs for it. Aluminium rear hub, aluminium hex, three gear gearbox. And I got a little bit of bling up the front, just some aluminium stuff. Um, that's it. So it's a complete kit setup, two mil riser on the aluminium hub, and I've got 37 and a half lossy oil in the shocks. And uh, I'm using the kit pistons, whatever they are. That's it. It's a complete kit setup with just 37 and a half oil in the front. And so um, what I did do is I tried tightening my diff a little bit because you know the guys that track they run tight diffs so I thought I'd try it and um, to my real surprisement just with a small adjustment of the diff when I raced it I could just tell straight away that there was a difference and I didn't like it to be honest I didn't like it at all and um, I was really surprised that with just a small tuning of the car I noticed it straight away and that's something I never felt with the Kayosho car I made many changes. I had like 30 or 40 grams on the back bumper to try and pull the R sand down um, when I was braking, um, and it did help. Um, but I'd done all these changes, probably too many changes with the Kosher car, and I just never really noticed them, never really happy, never consistent. This thing, out of the box, consistency. And that's a word that people will throw around at the track that um, you know, you just get nice consistency with them. All right, so the build quality of the car, the plastics are definitely not as good as a Kyosho, 100% uh, not as good as a Kyosho. Um, let's see, the with the car itself, the Kyosho car had much better steering. Like, there's a couple of corners that I could steer around really easy and go really nice. This I'm still struggling with. Um, I don't find this to have as good a steering as the Kaisho car. Um, but it doesn't matter because this is really consistent. So there's still a few areas on the track where I'm a bit slow. So that's good because I've got areas to improve. So the Kaisho car had better steering for me. You know, everyone's different. Um, but this should be able to do everything fine. Um, I love the design of the front shock tower, the, the body mounts, and also the bumper itself. This car is much stronger than the Crusher car in the front, like shock towers and bumper, 100% better. Um, oh, I did put the hard arms on there as well. Um, what I love about the team associated stuff is they have really long ball studs and they have bolts behind. They have bolts behind the ball studs. I love the strength of the ball studs going into some of the mounts. Um, I think that's 100% better. Um, uh, uh, um, I like the sort of design of the front end. It feels, it feels, the Team Associated car feels like it's a better designed 
car in a lot of areas. Um, so the I love how they have um, uh, in the ball joints, you've got holes, so you can easily just put a uh, hex screw in there and just undo stuff. It makes it really easy. So I did that to my um, Kaisha car. I drilled them out and put titanium ball studs in there so I could easily do stuff because I broke things that often that I had to repair in between races commonly. Um, uh, yeah, the shocks feel fine. I think the Kaisha shocks were a bit better than the Team Associated ones. The Team Associated ones, I think you need to get like the Kashima shocks, the X-rings and the, the shafts to make them a little bit better. Um, I like the, the battery mounting options. The battery mounting options are far better. Um, I really, really like it. Um, other than that, there's not a whole lot to it. So the front end's stronger. I love some of the design features of it. Bit of movement in there. Bit of movement in there, not much movement there. Um, and overall, I like it. They have a bit of slop up here. So I'm going to put some of those little red O-rings behind them. Um, suggestion, the guy at the track. Um, that's it. So I'll let you just have a little run through. I'll just turn off, put it on manual focus. Now I'll put it back on. All right, so I'll just go through the car. So we've got a Tekken motor. You can see the wiring, so I kind of like my wiring to be nice and neat. Tekken speed controller, um, receiver, transponder. So yeah, three gear gearbox, aluminium hubs, Kashima shock bodies. Um, that's it. I like the uh, Savox servos, they haven't let me down yet. So I'll try and put some video up of me in the car and um, see if I can do some consistent lap time. So um, I'm really happy with converting from Koyosho to Team Associated. The consistency of my driving and the lap times is just a uh, hundred percent improvement. Um, and so because of the SC5M truck, I went out and bought the B5M. Now, you know, I've got a Kyosho four drive buggy, and I'll tell you what, I actually quite like driving that, and it's quick. But the four wheel drive stuff here on the Gold Coast is quite mm, not as popular. Two wheel drive stock buggy, or two wheel drive buggies, and two wheel drive short course are the most popular uh, racing class. And um, so I've got the B5M and um, I've only run it once. Um, I took it to the track brand new, raced five minute qualifier, raced another five minute qualifier, and then I did a, uh, a final. And I was just starting to get the hang of the car driving and I think I was about to, I was coming third and I was trying to take uh, the second place driver. And on the very last corner, I gave him the smallest little bump and I just went past him and he was right behind me. So I pulled over and let him um, get second place, which means he bumped up to the A main. Um, but I'm hoping that I can qualify A main in this. So we've got like an open wheel class where it's just uh, anything two wheel drive, any motor, truggies, buggies, whatever you want. And um, it's quite nice in a class like that because in stock, People go crazy on trying to make their car as quick as possible. But with that, the B5M Lite, um, with no extra real stuff in it, it was right on the two-wheel drive weight limit of like 1,500 grams, which I couldn't believe. And with a mod motor, there's nothing else you have to do to go out and have fun. So it's like mod is now your cheap racing and stock is your expensive racing which is kind of the exact opposite. But I think that's what they've done at one of the tracks that I go to, is they've introduced this class and not made it stock. So you can just stick in any motor and go out and have fun because the track's quite small. And stock versus mod, the time difference would be very, very small for most drivers. Only the 
best drivers, you would see a significant difference in. And so we've created a new class on one of the tracks, two-wheel drive mod, buggy, two-wheel drive truggy, um, come have fun, you know, it's just about having fun. And, um, you know, I'm enjoying it and uh, I'm really enjoying it more now that I can consistently get around the track without crashing, breaking, shock towers, idle gears. But anyway, you know, that's why I converted from Kyosho to Team Associated. And just on a footnote, I watched the two-wheel drive um, finals in uh, Japan. And Jared Tebow, the main driver of Kyosho, and, um, you know, I kind of root for him because I've been a bit of a Kyosho fan. Um, and he was winning or he did a little mistake, come second or something like that. And he was doing well. He's a good driver. And he had a mistake. And it wasn't from any other driver. It was just himself. And I wonder whether the mistake was not him as a driver, but attributed a little bit to the car itself being difficult to set up, harder to set up to make it easier to drive. You know, because you you want to make the driving experience as easy as possible so you're not fighting the car. So, you know, with my Kyosho truck, I was always fighting it. With my Kyosho four-wheel drive buggy, to be honest, I'm actually fighting that quite a lot and I find it a little bit difficult to drive. It's damn quick, but just uh, I'm just not a good enough driver to get the most out of it. So, sorry for being such a long and boring video. Um, uh, hope you enjoy it and I'll put up some track time soon of hopefully both vehicles so thank you and uh, I'll speak to you later